<laughs> What's up, everyone? Brett Mix, Mixer Madness here for the Monday Night Raw review on January the 29th, 2024, from Tampa Bay, Florida's Emily Arena, home of the Tampa Bay Lightning of the NHL. This Raw was formulaic. It didn't have a big night feel outside of two promos we got. And even in those promos, guys, I could probably tell you what happened on this show in 60 seconds. But I'm going to, I don't do that. I go through the details that need to be talked about. And uh, that's how I choose to review my show. So, but I could do it in 60 seconds. And it's, that's not good. That's not a good thing. The WWE, I don't know, just lately, the, the booking makes sense. It's it's logical, but it's not overly exciting. And the shows have just been ending on no notes lately. The The winners just, they're there and that's it. And it's there's nothing. I don't I hate to compare it to the Attitude Era, but every Monday night would end with a guy walking in a kind of, that got overdone, but every Monday night, a guy would walk up the ramp backwards while there was someone in the ring staring back at them, you know, and, you know, I, I can't compare it to Stone Cold and The Rock because those were once-in-a-lifetime people at the same time. Um, there were two once-in-a-lifetime performers at the same period. That's why it was so big. But um, y you had some drama, some complex some conflict some conflict that was complex some conflict you need conflict man versus self man versus nature man versus person that's what we learn in school in english grade eight grade seven we all learn that what this is this is a verb of conflict in a way because it's man versus self booking i i don't know what's going on lately but this the royal rumble was just average mediocre and this raw was i i don't even know if mediocre is the word for it formulaic um i said before the show that maybe we'd get something like stone cold or the rock and maybe i was shooting for the moon there but i just thought this was the, the royal the raw after us royal rumble Triple H had this press conference where he said this is the biggest it's been since the Attitude Era. The most excited he's been. I don't see it coming off the TV that way. And even in the promos, I mean, Cody Rhodes just comes out and says, I'll think about it. Okay, well, that's good. That's good to know. Uh, Drew, Drew, CM Punk comes out, I'm injured. I'm not, I'm not going to WrestleMania. Drew McIntyre, I prayed for that. I mean, that was that was funny. I didn't I don't, I'm not even a Drew fan. I'm a CM Punk fan, but that was funny. Um the crowd laughed. But my god, like I'm I'm just I'm I'm almost stumped here. I I can't believe they would end the show that way. I I'm almost at a loss for words. Really, I am. But let's go over raw, guys. Uh Tampa Bay, Florida, January 29th, 2024. Let's do this. We opened up with them showing clips of the Royal Rumble prone only matches. My picture froze. Maybe it was the same for everybody. I'm guessing it was. I'm guessing it was, or it was just a sports net thing in Canada. But the picture froze for at least two and a half minutes while the Royal Rumble clips were showing. And it had just the still picture of outside of Tampa Bay, outside of their night, their nighttime uh, picture of outside the arena. So uh, if it didn't freeze for you, that's what I saw for at least three minutes and I was flipping my TV channels, making sure it wasn't my connection. Uh, and we finally get it back, and we get Pat McAfee coming out. Uh, Pat McAfee entered the Royal Rumble, and he also entered the Royal Rumble to begin the show, and now he begins Raw because he's going to be Raw's new color commentator from now on. It's going to be Pat and Cole from now on. Punk comes out first, but his arm is in a sling. It's almost as if God himself is keeping Rollins and Punk from not competing i shit you not i wrote that in my notes so drew praying about it that came after i wrote it's almost as if god himself is i mean what are the two weeks in a row we get the injured person kicking off raw and it's punk at first week it's rollins next week it's punk that's the wrestlemania main event they wanted or that, that we think that they would do that's how it was building anyway i guess it's a new trend if you get injured you open up raw CM Punk chan chants rain down from the crowd. He cuts a great uh, moving promo even. I would, I'd describe it as moving. 
He says he's main eventing WrestleMania, maybe he just isn't in the cards. He says next year he's going to bust his ass. And I actually thought of Drew interrupting him in my mind. I thought, what if Drew comes out right now? Uh, I, in my Raw preview, actually, earlier today, I said that we might get a Drew and Punk match, but that was before I knew how injured Punk was, obviously. Um, so, yeah, I, I, it makes sense that Drew would come out and interrupt him uh, and set up for something for the night, but I didn't know what, but I should have... Should have thought Sami Zayn right after that, but I didn't. I didn't think that in depth. I just thought of the interruption. I didn't think of where they would go with it, or else I might have predicted that. Um, like I say, this booking by Triple H is logical. It's logistic, but it's just not off the page writing. It's just it doesn't jump out at you. It's not something you look at and go, "Wow, man, this is something that you just go, okay, yeah, all right, that makes sense." But that's not good. That's just Vince McMahon's booking didn't make any sense, but it could be creative. Same with Paul Heyman. That's why ECW was a riot. But Triple H's book, I mean, if if you want to trade things making sense for entertainment, then I guess you like how it is now. But I don't know. I just don't know. After this Raw, after the Raw and the Royal Rumble two shows in a row, I'm. I don't know, man. I hope SmackDown really pulls through. Uh, so, anyway, CM Punk comes out and uh, Drew uh, Mac. He cuts a really moving promo. Talks about a kid with cancer that he always comes to visit, and talks about how this is just minor compared to that in the grand scheme of things. Talks about how you know he's really he sounds like a mature dude, like with a lot of wisdom through years of knowledge. Uh, Drew McIntyre cuts him off. And um, Punk says, this is not what I was expecting. And uh, McIntyre then, I like how he talks through the music too. Usually when the music hits, people just stop talking. I like how Punk decided to talk through the music. That's that's what the, everyone should logically do. Fuck you if you're interrupting me. I'm going to talk through your entrance theme. But um, Drew McIntyre said, you know, I can really relate with you. And we think, and I'm thinking, oh God, here, here comes more of the tweener Drew. Where, where he looks like a heel for interrupting such a moving promo, but then he's going to start talking like a jackass, but, and now he's sucking up to him, so now he's going to be a face again, and then he's a heel. Then he's going to be a face five minutes later, and then a heel ten minutes after that. But at least he said the, the line about praying for this because he picked a side. He's a heel. He's a heel. Book him as a heel. Act like a heel. Drew McIntyre, you are a heel. So anyways, he's a heel, and he decides that, and that's great. And um, I'm not a Drew guy, but that I, I prayed for this. Got a lot of laughs out of the Tampa Bay crowd, even though it was a serious moment. And it was a serious thing to see CM Punk crushed about his WrestleMania dreams. Um, because I believe that without the injury, he still was going to main event WrestleMania, or at least be in a title match at WrestleMania against Seth Rollins. Uh, so anyways, Drew McIntyre beats him down. It looks like the asshole. Sami Zayn comes out to help him out because they have some history there. Zayn and McIntyre do. And uh, Zayn helps out Punk, but uh, leads to a match for later tonight. Okay, so that's what the opening segments are supposed to do. Supposed to entertain you and lead to something later, and it did that. Decent opening segment, but nothing outlandish, nothing amazing. And it's really unfortunate about CM Punk. He does have bad luck. Uh, the judgment. I'm, I see fans online. I'm reading some comments on Instagram, and they're blaming Punk for being injured. It's like, fuck. Is he, are these people even thinking? Like it's his fault. Like what? Anyway, the Judgment Day are backstage. Priest and Balor say tonight no one will be challenging the Judgment Day. DIY are ready for their tag team title match. There you go. They give the crowd some reason to cheer DIY. In my brief preview that only like 30 people saw because I uploaded it just five hours before the show. I forgot it was Monday for a second. I don't didn't work today, so I was I literally forgot it was Monday and it was like 1 p.m. and I'm like, oh fuck, I guess I'll do a raw preview. Um, so uh, good thing I remembered the show was on. Um, so only like yeah, like I think 30 people or whatever clicked on it. So. Uh, but I predicted I or I didn't predict I said the DIY need a reason to get over with the live crowd unless you saw the yellow and black brand NXT you don't really know why this is a special uh, team and uh, 
they need to make a video package of them or something to get over with the casual fans. But tonight they had that little face to video while they're walking down the hallway and the camera's backing up while they're talking. They kind of promo that way. That was good. Doesn't show them why they were so important, but it was it, it was a good step in the right direction of getting people to care about them at least. Because this is an uninterrupted, no commercials. So that's great for me. I hate commercials. And I hate them in today's wrestling where, the, where you get a spot one minute in. And I, fu- I thought they figured that this tag title match, all four guys forgot about that because they did the spot where they did the suicide dive that leads to a commercial, but no commercials. So I'm thinking, did they forget that there's no commercials? Um, Tommaso and Gargano with great teamwork, but Baylor and Priest made frequent tags, isolating Ciampa in the corner. A version of the white noise is hit. Uh, Gargano and Ciampa meet, do the meet in the middle, but Priest saves the match and the gold. Ten minutes into the match, you can notice the pacing is better with no commercials. Some kickouts near the end. Uh, a sling blade is hit by Balor, and he goes off the top with a coup de gras. And the DIY then counter that with a crossface. Both guys do it in the same time. This is awesome as chanted. It was good. Nowhere near awesome. When I I consider awesome four stars and up. Nowhere near that. Uh, they got a chant going with the crowd, but the Champa is pinned by Balor with the coup de grace at 1230 as the Judgment Day retained in a very good tag team match. Three stars. Not quite the six stars that McAfee said it was, but three is uh, good enough for that opening tag match. Next, we get a segment with the Judgment Day. R-Truth uh, comes out and... They welcome him, actually, and he tells each member what he thinks of them. Hilarious stuff, more hilarious r true stuff. They continue. Triple H is doing a really good job with that. They continue to hit that out of the park. r truth is gold, and they keep making great... Uh, even Pat McAfee's comment of r truths my favorite Judgment Day member. <laughs> It's it's something that's so simple because, I mean, that joke's been around for over a month now, so it's something that anyone could have said, but... Just just hearing it in the legit voice is just funny. Uh, but then they beat him down and, uh, you know, try and get over his, the heels they are. And then The Miz makes the save because of their history with the awesome truth. So we got some storyline progression that way with some comedy. So that was a good segment. Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler get the victory over... Uh, with a Z360 over Piper Niven and Chelsea Green. Okay, I'll never say that again like that. But I'm, I'm sick of her. Uh, Samantha Irvin or Samantha something. She says it has to say it that way. Yeah, I don't like that. Uh, so do, I do it, right? But yeah, I don't know. Uh, the match was okay. A star and three quarters I wrote, but it wasn't anything memorable. Uh, Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler. They need better booking. At least they get the W. Cody said, Cody Rhodes comes out now for his segment. He says, Tampa Bay, what do you want to talk about? Shocking. And all we need is, is an escape. And uh, that's so true about pro wrestling, man. We use it as an escape. And he said Saturday night he needed us more than ever. And he was really emotional when he said this. And then he looked at the WrestleMania 40 sign. And before he made it, a commercial, uh, made it official, that's when... Seth Rollins' music hit, and everybody did the whoa. Just change his song already is what I'm thinking. Rollins then tells two lies. One is that he's the guy, and two is that his new title is the new is the title of WWE. <laughs> I'm sorry. The title that has lineage to the NWA that it's been around for a hundred years passed on from the Funks to the Flares to the Briscoes all the way to the Stings and the Hogans and the Savages all the way to WWF to the Brunos to the Backlands to the Moraleses to the Hogans to the Warriors to the Austin Rock Triple H Cena but that title Benoit Jericho Angle that title uh doesn't mean any and Roman Reigns that title doesn't mean anything but this new title that's been defended for about a year now uh, and with the likes of Drew McIntyre and Sami Zayn and Seth Rollins that title means more now just because Seth Rollins said it in a promo come on guys who are they fucking kidding here that's I'll tell you this Seth really believes his own bullshit um he did a hell of a job trying to convince Cody I can't believe it worked. He's like, I'll think about it. 
What does he got to think about? The whole story, his whole story is... I think this is just an excuse for them to feel out if The Rock's going to happen or maybe they don't know or I don't know why they're, they're doing this. Co- or maybe it's an excuse for, yeah, for The Rock to face Roman and get Cody out of the match. But the whole story is about conquering Roman. It's not It's not just about Cody becoming champion. It's about Cody beating Roman for the title. I mean, I was barely watching last year. I mean, I've been watching for 30 years, but last year I was a little off and on. And I even know that. And, yeah. So, Jesus. Like, I mean, they even had this, the Dusty Rhodes title, he calls it. Well, no, Dusty Rhodes' lineage is to the other title. That, Inventions of One, when Jericho, when they merged the WCW and WWF title, that's the title they merged it to. And then they merged it again and again and again in the Universal, and they merged it with that. So that's the title. This new title that they made up out of air has no lineage other than the last year. Sorry, that little things like that bother me. Maybe it's not a little thing. It's it's not a little thing. It's it's the title. It's the world title. That should be the most important thing in this whole business. So it's not something little. I just yeah, that really bothered me. Bronson Reed took on main event Jey Uso. Bronson Reed runs into Jey Uso in the corner. Highly competitive back and forth match. I'm afraid of Reed and Uso, and they're oof, Uso's over with hell, a hell of a over with the crowd. Reed goes up for a top rope tsunami, but Jey with a thrust kick and a spear, and then he beats him after the Uso splash. I like it. Simplistic uh, booking where you the the champion wins with a finishing move in the middle mid card match on Raw. That's what you should do. Andrade's backstage signs with Raw, signs with uh, uh, Nick Aldis, shows up, he signs with Adam Pierce. Nick Aldis says that he has Braun Breaker on the phone. So the, the fans did a, oh, as Braun Breaker was impressive in the Royal Rumble. And uh, so I guess Braun Breaker is going to SmackDown, but Andrade is going to Raw. Next up, we got Gunther and Kofi Kingston for the IC title. Gunther's pre-match promo was actually pretty good. Uh, he won't think about how he won't think about him anymore after tonight, but he'll think about him for a while. That was good stuff. The ring general stayed on, on the back of Kofi in this match with a Boston Crab. They go to a commercial during a Boston Crab. I've never seen them go to a commercial during a submission. That was weird. Complete dominance by Gunther as they used his ba- Kofi's back against him. Driven back first against the apron. Power bombs on the concrete. Like they, they really went to hell on his back. And then Kofi was still hit suicide dives. Kingston off the barricade into a leg drop on Gunther. And he kicks out with both. A thunderous clothesline. And then Gunther signals for the end. Wins with his powerbomb. I gave it three stars and a quarter. I thought that was the match of the night. Great match. Tegan Knox and Natalia take on the Kabuki Warriors. Kabuki Warriors get a victory. Obviously, they retain their first defense. Same with the insane elbow to win. So gave it a star and a three quarters. Bailey cut a promo about how damage control has all the gold. It reminded me of the Hart Foundation from 1997 when they had all the titles and Owen had his slammies. Uh, they had to take a picture. Rhea Ripley interrupted Bailey and said, the only reason you broke my record is because I wasn't in the match. Then Nia Jax attacked Rhea Ripley from behind. Nia gives her the annihilator in the ring and then Nia tells Bailey that, she's, that Rhea Ripley's not going to WrestleMania, implying that she will. Then we got Drew McIntyre taking on Zami Zayn, Jackknife cover on Zayn, and a near fall. Uh, third, this is awesome chant. Tampa Bay chanted this is awesome three different times tonight. A blue thunder bomb is countered after Drew's three, two, one, and Drew wins with the Claymore in the end. D- Triple H's booking is simplistic. It makes sense, but it's not overly exciting. This is pro wrestling. You can book, this is pro wrestling. You can book so many things in pro wrestling. You have a creative team. You're this multi-million dollar conglomerate company. And you don't book creatively. You don't captivate. This is, people sit in a room and they think about for days of the week what they can do to make the main event of Raw memorable. And all they came up with was Drew McIntyre hitting his finisher on Sami Zayn and then going to the back like this. Woo! That's it. That's the Raw after the Royal Rumble that starts WrestleMania season. This is the flagship show of the biggest company in the biggest time of year, on the biggest night, in the main event, at the last stop spot. And that 
is the message they're giving you. Not good enough. Terrible. Terrible end. I rated the show a 5 out of 10, even though it had a great couple of matches. You need more than great matches in wrestling. You need over-the-top segments, promos, character work. Um, BC Amplified says it best. Larger-than-life characters. You need all that stuff. And I completely agree with him. Uh, this is not this is not what's needed. It is in some ways, but it's not in others. I'm just underwhelmed by this Raw after the Royal Rumble. Tell me what you guys think in the comments section. I uh, My reviews always end up being 20 minutes for TV. My pay-per-view went like 37 minutes, but it ends up being about 20 minutes long. So uh, thank you for staying. If you've stayed this long, thank you so much. Hit subscribe or like. Give me a like. It helps the algorithm. And uh, yeah, tell me what you think of Raw in the comment section below. I'll be here for a SmackDown preview and the Raw rating as well. And I'll also be doing my Monday Night Wars. I do them every day. So if you like that, follow along. I'm Brett Mix. I'm getting out of here. That was Raw. Hopefully we see better as we go during WrestleMania season as the length of the ladder should only go up from here. I'm Brett Mix, and I'm out.